617, we received a report of an active shooter inside the Zona Caliente Sports Bar. It's like a restaurant slash bar. So multiple units from around the city flooded to the area uh, because we know as first responders, the quicker we can get to these types of scenes, usually it will prevent further loss of life. When we got on scene, there were two deceased individuals located inside the restaurant. Uh, by preliminarily conducting quick interviews with those that were on scene, there was upwards of 15 to 20 patrons inside the business and, and four or five employees. They reported that the shooting suspect had entered the location, had immediately walked to the end of the bar where there was an employee standing, and something was said, we're not sure what, and then he pulled a gun out and shot and killed the employee. While that's going on, there was a customer at the location having dinner with his wife. Uh, he told his wife at that point to get down because he was carrying a firearm and he made the conscious decision to go ahead and engage the shooter thinking that there might be further loss of life. While he's doing that, he's, in, he's involved in shooting at the suspect. The suspect goes down and he's pronounced deceased as well. Uh, there was a third victim at the location, a female, but we believe her injuries were consistent with trying to run out of the business. There's a lot of broken glass in there from the shooting. We believe her feet were cut and that's why she went to the hospital. So right now we've got to vet those details. He claims he has a concealed handgun license and we'll look at that obviously, but right now, you know, from, from what we've been able to ascertain and gather just from the people that were on the scene, it sounds as if this guy uh, really kind of uh, saved uh, or prevented further loss of life. And so uh, we'll be piecing that together as the interviews occur. We've got a lot of people to interview. We have victim service counselors on scene, uh, a lot of people traumatized by what they saw, fearing that they were going to be killed, stuff like that. So anytime you, you try to process that in, we want to make sure we have our counselors and stuff here on scene for them. Now to an untold story on the shooting at Clackamas Town Center. We now know there was another armed man in the mall that day, a shopper who had the shooter in his gun sight, but never pulled the trigger. The night team's Mike Benner is live outside the mall. And Mike, the big question for many tonight would be, why didn't he shoot? And Tracy, he understands that is a question a lot of people will be asking tonight. But Nick Mealy tells us he did not shoot because he was afraid he would injure or kill an innocent person running for safety. Nick Mealy is emotionally drained. The 22 year old was at the Clackamas Town Center with a friend and her four month old baby when a masked gunman opened fire. I heard three shots and I, I turned and looked at Casey and I, and I go, are, are you fucking serious? And she, she looks at me and she goes, yeah. As the friend and baby hit the floor, Mealy, who has a concealed carry permit, positioned himself behind a pillar. He was work working on his rifle and he kept pulling the charging handle and hitting the side. The break in gunfire allowed Mealy to pull out his own gun, a Glock 22, but he never took his eyes off the shooter. In my mind, I kept saying, like, drop it, drop the gun, you know. And when I drew up, I got tunnel vision, and all I saw was my front side on his head, and I was, I was, indexing and as I was going down I was going to pull I saw someone in the back of the Charlotte move and I knew that if I fired and missed I could end up hitting them so Mealy took cover inside a nearby store he never did pull the trigger and he stands by that decision I'm not beating myself up because I didn't shoot him but I know that after he saw me the, I think the last shot he fired was the one that he used on himself the gunman was dead but not before taking two innocent lives with him and as Mealy points out, taking the innocence of everyone else. I don't ever want to have to see anyone that way ever. It just, it bothers me, you know. It just so happens that Nick Mealy is a former security, uh, security guard at this mall of all places. He left in August for another security job. He tells us that his ultimate goal is law enforcement. Back to you. What a tough decision he had to make in a split second. Mike Benner, thank you.
family's children run for cover during a peace rally at a park this evening. A man was streaming the Peace in the City rally live on Facebook when somebody you see here started shooting. In the past hour, we learned that shooter was then shot by a bystander who had a permit to carry a gun. Good evening to you. I'm Eric Von Ank, and glad you're with us tonight. The shooter who started all of this is at the hospital in critical condition, we're told. Titusville police say it began with a fight in the middle of the rally this evening at Isaac Campbell Park on South Street near US-1. News 6's Clay Lapard is there live covering this for us. Clay, you talked to the man who streamed this on Facebook. What did he tell you? Eric, obviously shaken up. Plenty of people were filled inside this park for a Peace in the City rally. In fact, organizers were even giving away backpacks to children getting ready for the upcoming school year. And in an instant, it became a shootout. This is not what Dwight Harvey thought he was going to show on Facebook Live as he DJed this inaugural Peace in the City rally. All these kids in the bounce house back here. And they start shooting. The bounce houses was full of kids. It was just chaos after that. Everybody was running for the exits. A few hours later, Harvey still can't believe what happened here at Isaac Campbell Park in Titusville, watching firsthand as two people fired shots at each other in a crowd of more than 100. Titusville police say one man involved in a fist fight at this park left, only to return shortly thereafter and started firing shots. Police say the gunman was then shot by someone else who had a legally concealed weapon. That initial shooter had to be airlifted to the hospital and is fighting for his life. Officers say no one else was hurt. This Peace for the City rally was put on by family members of Tony Butler, who deputies say was murdered after his body was found inside this burned car in Mims back on July 12th. They put it together because of that. Peace rally, but I guess there really ain't no peace in my city. Folks gonna come out here and shoot around kids. It's, it's just hard for me to understand. At this time, Titusville police is not releasing the name of the suspect who is taken to the hospital. However, they did say they do not expect any charges to be filed against that innocent bystander who fired back at the initial shooter. Eric? Yeah, I think as Dwight said, hard to understand there. Clay Lepard live for us tonight. Thank you. That we have a team of about 12 people that provide security at New Life Church. On a normal Sunday, about half of them are armed. Uh, they are all uh, licensed. They are trained. They are equipped. They are screened. But it, it obviously yesterday, if we had not had an armed person on our campus, uh, 50 to 100 people could have lost their lives yesterday. Have you always had armed guards, or was this a, re a recent development? Well, always. The church is 22 years old, so not always. But in the past few years, because of the stature of the church and because of the pro uh, the prominence of the church, we, we have felt the need for that. It was in place when I became pastor four months ago, this uh, policy of allowing licensed uh, security guards on our staff. They're members of our church. These are people who tend and worship at our church. These are not mercenaries that we hire to uh, uh, walk around our campus and provide security. These are people who worship there, who have a sense of ownership at the church. I want to extend my sympathy to the families of the victims and of the gunman, and I mean that very sincerely. And uh, really, I what happened yesterday were uh, at the church. I heard shots fired, and uh, there was chaos. There was a lot of people in the church, and the uh, people were running away from where the shots were fired. And they were the the. the uh, Shots were so loud, I thought he was inside, and uh, he wasn't even inside yet when I heard the, the rounds. And uh, I saw him, it seemed like the halls cleared out, and I saw him coming through the doors. And uh, I took cover, 
and I waited for him to get closer, and I came out of cover and uh, identified myself and engaged him and, and uh, took him down. And that's pretty much it. A chaotic chain of events in Tumwater. It's like an earthquake. You just got to get up and haul ass and run. Gunshots and Walmart shoppers running for their lives. People are grabbing their kids and pushing them in front of them and saying, go, go, go. Right now, police are still on scene at that Walmart in Tumwater. A carjacker injured two people at separate scenes before police say a customer took out that gunman. Comas Patrick Quinn was on scene just moments after that shooting. And Patrick joins us now. Witnesses calling this customer a hero tonight, Patrick. Michelle, I heard that word hero over and over again. And while there is a strong police presence right now and really has been since about 6 o'clock this evening, it's what happened before the police showed up. The customers tell me prevented further pain and simply saved lives. And I heard this popping noise. Panic at Walmart on Father's Day. And then I hear everybody run. There's a guy shooting. Caitlin Walner was at checkout when she raced for the exit. We all just dropped our stuff in the store and ran for our lives. But police say the first gunshots were down the road near Tumwater High School, where the gunman hijacked a car, injuring a 16-year-old girl. He then went to the Walmart, where police say he fired one shot inside. It's like... An earthquake. You just got to get up and haul ass and run. The gunman fired more shots in the parking lot where Megan Chadwick huddled with her four kids. And so I thought we were in the clear as soon as we got out. And then I just heard four gunshots in a row, the cars crashing and the carts flying at us. The gunman tried to hijack a car. When the driver refused to give it up, the gunman shot him. That man was airlifted to Harborview. And I didn't see any. It was then that Brian Adams saw a Walmart customer jump into action. He is a hero. He, no, he is a hero. Brian says that customer pulled out his own weapon and killed the gunman. I really think more people could have easily have been shot with what this guy was doing. He was just, there were several shots. Who is the concerned customer? We don't know right now. Megan said her husband was one of three she saw who's tried to stop the gunman. He just said, take the kids, get out. He reached for his gun. This Walmart will remain closed while police investigate the shooting. A shooting customers say could have been worse if it wasn't for the quick action of those not in uniform. Those men stood up. They stood up. They're heroes to me. And back here live, what's more is after that mystery customer shot and killed the gunman, witnesses say he actually then went over to the man who had been previously shot with his first aid kit and tried to save his life. That man, again, who refused to give up his car, he was flown to Harborview, and I just checked in with an hospital official. She told me that man is in critical condition tonight. We're live in Tumwater. Patrick Quinn, Como News. The man who stopped a carjacking in Washington State by killing the suspect says he is still traumatized by that incident. David George is an e EMT and a pastor. He shot an armed suspect who went on a rampage at a Walmart that left three people hurt on Father's Day. George broke down as he described the terrifying confrontation. When the gunman began threatening another person for the use of their car, I moved in order to have a safe shot at the gunman. He entered the vehicle, which I considered an even bigger threat, and I fired to stop the shooter. I'm a credentialed range safety officer. I train regularly to be proficient with the firearm that I carry, and I do so in a safe and a responsible manner. George says he acted in order to protect his family and the other customers in the store. He said he and his family are praying for the other victims, and he will not face criminal charges. In the meantime, we are getting a look at the suspect before the rampage started. Police say he drove his car into a gas station, pulled up next to another vehicle, and then got into the driver's seat of the second vehicle before being chased away. Detectives say he later used a gun that he took from his girlfriend to shoot at passers, passing drivers. Now to a developing story out of Spartanburg County. Two people are in jail after deputies say one of them kicked open the doors of a church with a shotgun in hand and the other is accused of aiding in the crime. Fox Carolina's Derek Dellinger is live tonight outside the church. And Derek, those had to be some tense moments inside of that church today. Very tense, Jade, in fact, but it was brought to a quick end thanks to the help of the church's pastor and his grandson. 
Jesse Cates didn't hold back as he was taken out of the Spartanburg County Sheriff's Office this afternoon. To our cameras, he admitted to bringing a gun to the Southside Free Will Baptist Church this morning. I, I wanted to see my kids. Okay. If they, uh, why did you bring a gun? Because I went there one time and they wouldn't help. Deputies say the case with Cates began early this morning. Pastor Henry Guyton says Cates had been a regular at the church the past few months, and this morning he showed up to the church complaining of chest pains. He was checked out. He was fine, but that wasn't the last they saw of him. He went home. He come back with a gun. The pastor's grandson, Henry A. Guyton, was the one with a concealed weapons permit in the church. We noticed he pulled back up. Well, he went to the trunk of his car and pulled out a shotgun. So I grabbed my gun out of my back pocket and I took off through the back door and locked the door. The pastor and the parishioners say they were able to get the gun away from Cates, who said he was there because he wanted to see his children. He was arrested, so was his sister. But that part of Cates' story didn't check out with deputies. He's claiming that he came to see his kids. Well, got a new fact and a clue for you. His kids don't go there. While authorities try to piece everything together, the sheriff says the parishioners did everything right, including Henry A. Guyton. They locked the door, and when the guy, and they were getting, you know, calling 911 at the time, and he didn't draw his weapon or make any moves or actions toward this gentleman until he kicked the door open and forced the issue. I think it was going to be a hostage situation, and I believe somebody probably would have got hurt because he was very serious. I mean, you could see it. Yeah, you could see it in his eyes. The pastor of the church says Cates never asked for help with his children. If he would have told us he needed help, the church would have helped him. And tonight, the sheriff is calling the churchgoers heroes. But don't tell that to them. I don't feel like a hero. Just felt like I done what I needed to do. Now, the pastor of the church says they were due to have some singers, actually some children singing here at the church early this morning. Those children, by the way, apparently had no relation to Gates or his sister. But get this, the bus that was taking them actually broke down on the way to the church this morning, Jade. Well, now, Derek, have we been able to find out anything about the suspects and their home life, maybe? Well, according to court records, the uh, Gates had his home foreclosed on just a few days ago. There's no word, though, on whether that could have been another possible motive for what happened this morning. Jay? All right, Derek, thanks so much. A doctor who was grazed by gunfire from a patient in his office at a suburban Philadelphia hospital helped stop him by apparently returning fire with his own weapon and severely injuring him. But a 53-year-old caseworker who entered the office with the patient was killed. Without that firearm, uh, this guy could have went out in the hallway and just walked down the office until he ran out of ammunition. So uh, without a doubt, I mean, uh, the, I believe the doctor saved lives. Several hours after the shooting, Investigators had only limited information on what happened inside the closed office, but believe the doctor, a psychiatrist, acted in self-defense. You know, I know that um, yeah, sometimes the doctors, uh, uh, much to their chagrin, are, are facing very dangerous situations, especially in a psychiatric setting. So I can tell you that uh, um, this was one of those situations where obviously the doctor, you know, faced a situation where his life was in jeopardy. Two guns were recovered. The motive for the shooting was unknown. The patient, identified as Richard Plotz, remains hospitalized. He is undergoing surgery probably as we speak, and we would expect to attempt to interview him if he is if he survives, and we don't know the full status of his medical condition, but if he survives, we would attempt to interview him. Authorities say there are no surveillance cameras in the doctor's office or the waiting area outside. The center had no metal detectors. Bob McCall, Associated Press. The county man pleaded guilty today in connection with a shooting rampage at a Plymouth bar that left one man dead and another critically injured. William Alibaugh admits he shot the two men at the bar and he was stopped only by another bar patron who pulled out his own gun and shot Alibaugh. I witness news reporter and lead team reporter Andy Mahalshik is live outside the Luzerne County Courthouse for the latest for us. Andy. Well, Drew, investigators say they believe Alaba would have shot more people inside that bar had it not been for that customer who pulled out his own gun and shot Alaba. 
William Alaba admits he opened fire at Bonnie's Food and Spirits on the night of September 9, 2012, shooting two customers, killing one and injuring another. Alaba was asked to leave that bar that night when customers said they saw him carrying a handgun and they got nervous. Well, Alaba, prosecutors say, got very angry. He now admits he shot 30 year old Stephen Holloman in the head as he stood by the bar. Holloman survived. Alaba then went outside and shot and killed 39 year old Scott Luzetsky. Alaba then, with gun in hand, walked toward two men who were hiding behind a car. One of the men, Mark Kaitor, a customer, pulled out his own gun and shot Alaba. Prosecutors say the bloodshed would have been much worse had Alaba not been shot. The video footage and the evidence reveals that Mr. Alaba had turned around and was reapproaching the bar. Uh, Mr. Kiter then acted, taking him down. Uh, we believe, you know, uh, that it could have been much worse that night. The families of the victims lashed out at Alaba in court, calling him a coward. Denise Johnson is Stephen Holloman's mother. I wanted him to know exactly what he did to both our families. That's what I wanted him to know. My son is doing okay. He's a survivor, he's a fighter, and he's going to keep fighting. Mr. Alaba, do you want to say anything at all to the families of uh, your victims that night? Mrs. Hallman, do you want to say anything to her? They, I mean, she called you coward, that you didn't admit to it. Alaba will spend 25 to 50 years in prison. Reporting live at the Luzerne County Courthouse, Andy Mahal, Chicago Witness News. Drew and Candace. Andy, thank you. A wild scene inside a West Philadelphia barbershop tonight ends with one man dead and another considered a hero. NBC 10's Randy Gyllenhaal is live at police headquarters. Randy, you spoke to people who were inside the shop when that shooting started. Yeah, and Denise, these witnesses say this all started as an argument between a customer and one of the barbers, and they say it could have been much worse if it wasn't for another man also carrying a gun who fired back at the shooter. The West Philly barber shop was packed full of customers getting haircuts when witnesses say one man got angry, started a fight, and pulled a gun. They was arguing, and it, um, they was taking it too far. And I went in a barber and said, chill out. Then suddenly bullets went flying, nearly hitting customers and staff. I heard gunshots, so I ducked and I, I ran. 16-year-old Yusuf Mack hit the floor, escaping with no injuries because in what appears to be a case of very good timing, police say another man with a concealed carry permit saw what was happening and fired back, striking that shooter in the chest, killing him. Uh, he just shot him when he was done shooting me, he ran. That man's being credited with saving lives. Police are investigating this homicide as a case of self-defense. Basically came to the rescue and he had a legal permit to carry. After the shooting, the man turned himself in to police in the 16th district. Homicide detectives will determine if any charges need to be filed, but police say right now it appears he saved the lives of others, cutting a potentially deadly shooting short. It was just a legal gun permit carrier. He responded, and uh, I, I guess he saved a lot of people in there. And you think if it wasn't for this guy that some more people could have been injured or killed? It could have been a lot worse, correct. Now, Philadelphia police have not released the identity of the man who was killed, only saying he was about 40 years old. Meanwhile, no other injuries inside the barbershop. Live at police headquarters, Randy Gyllenhaal, NBC 10 News. An Uber driver with a concealed carry license shot a man who opened fire on a crowd in Logan Square. The driver was sitting in his car when he witnessed Everardo Custodio open fire Friday night at Milwaukee and Drake. He grabbed his own gun and fired six shots at Custodio, hitting him in the lower back and legs. No one else was hurt. The driver stayed until police arrived. He has not been charged. Meanwhile, Custodio is being held without bond on assault and unlawful use of a weapons charge.
everybody here wants facts, wants information about what's going on, and uh, and we'd love to provide for. But if you came here wanting to know the motive behind this shooting, you're going to leave here disappointed. Um, we have fa certain facts that we can release to pr to protect the integrity of the investigation. We, we have to release it in a, in a timely fashion and collect the facts and make sure our information is, is correct before we release it. We're here assisting the sheriff, Joe Tackett. There's multiple agencies involved, DPS, Texas Rangers, FBI, HSI, ATF, Bear County SO, and many, many others. We are all working together to support the sheriff in this investigation. At approximately 11.20 this morning, a suspect was seen at a Valero gas station in Sutherland Springs, Texas. He was dressed in all black. That suspect crossed the street to the church, uh, exited his vehicle, and began firing at the church. That suspect then moved to the right side of the church and continued to fire. That suspect entered the church and continued to fire. As he exited the church, a local resident grabbed his rifle and engaged that suspect. The suspect dropped his rifle, which was a Ruger AR assault type rifle, and fled from the church. Uh, our local citizen uh, pursued the suspect at that time. A short time later, as law enforcement responded, that suspect right at the Wilson uh, Guadalupe County line, he ran off the roadway and crashed out and was found de deceased in his vehicle. At that time, we, at this time, we don't know if it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound or if he was shot by our local resident who engaged him in gunfire. <laughs> we know he's deceased in the vehicle. The, the suspect has not been completely identified.